I'm in the shadow of the Washington Monument because the sun is right there and that's where the helicopters are going to come from and if I'm standing there I'm not going to see the helicopter. So came over here, we'll get a little view and then we'll move over and see if we can see them come out of the Oval. Yeah, they're closing the park today, not making the same mistake twice. So they're putting down the wheel mats for where the helicopter lands right now. Tent's back. You guys were asking about that. It went away yesterday. I couldn't really tell. Suitland Parkway. We're making our way out to Andrews Air Force Base, about 10 minutes away from downtown. Don't know if I'll get there. There's one of the decoys coming back. We're in Anacostia right now. Uh, Nighthawk 1 and 2 are just up over those trees, but <laughs> unfortunately I'm now behind the trees. They are making their way back to Anacostia. Maybe we get a clearing here in a bit. Yeah, I think by this power line we might see them. Here, right over the power lines. 
Wow, you just look at that tree. That tree is just electric. It looks good out here on the grounds of the National Cathedral, where we're not starting our walk. We're doing something more important. We're going to lunch. <laughs> so uh, as uh, you probably saw, we've already filmed uh, Vice President's Motorcade. We filmed Nighthawk One and Marine One. We filmed some fire trucks because fire trucks are cool. I tried to film Air Force One. I drove all the way out there and they took off to the south. They didn't take off to the north. So, say la vie, such is life. Now I'm thinking, let's get some lunch and then let's go walk through the woods because it's gorgeous today. It's the fall. It's beautiful. And let's take the back woods and come up by Hillary Clinton's house because I haven't taken you over to Hillary and Bill's place in a while. Let's go see what's going on over there. Yeah. Oh, so some of you are asking about the construction here at the National Cathedral. And it's not construction, it's reconstruction. It's from an earthquake. There was an earthquake in Pennsylvania, God, 2011, is that 10 years ago? A 5.8, and it shook the cathedral very badly. And a lot of the artwork, a lot of the little uh, things up on the top, well, they were damaged significantly damaged to the tune of 35 million dollars worth of damage that was done to the National Cathedral. And that number is still going up because they haven't finished the repairs. It took 80 years to build this building and it's taken 10 years to repair all the damage from the earthquake and they're still not done. They're still working here and there. You'll find scaffoldings and construction cranes trying to get this building back to what it once was. So there's a little park here, it's not really on my way, but I know it's filled with leaves. I mean, it's filled. I mean, come on. It's the fall. You got to do this. All right. So over there, guys, that's the former Veterans Administration Hospital. Now the Russian Embassy. The Russians bought that dilapidated hospital in the 1980s early, late 70s, 80s, and converted it into their embassy compound. Except for this building across the street, this building across the street is the FBI's spy house. The FBI owns this building. Well, they even put a wreath up, or they just didn't take last year's wreath down, to be honest, I can't remember. And the FBI operates out of this building, watching the comings and goings of everyone across the street at the Russian embassy. Now, rumors are there's a tunnel under the Russian embassy, possibly from that house, possibly from another house I've shown you before. I don't think it's from this house because if it was from this house, it would have had to go under the road and all that traffic maybe would have like collapsed the tunnel. I don't know why they built it. I think they built the tunnel just to say that we have a tunnel under it. It's not like there was any valuable intelligence gained from sitting like 50 feet under dirt underneath the Russian embassy. But I don't know. They built it anyway, supposedly, maybe, kind of. Yeah, I'm lazy, creature of habit, but you know what? It's good. It's just good. It's good barbecue. So you know when you go to a bar and there's always this old guy in the corner by himself just reading the newspaper? Looks like a geezer you don't want to mess with. Pretty blue sky here in Glover Park. Glover Park is the neighborhood just north of Georgetown. A uh, couple little restaurants and spots. That's actually the back entrance to the vice president's house. That's the vice president's escape route. And right over there is the good guys club where, well, let's put it this way. Good guys don't go to the good guys club. Bad guys go to the good guys club. <laughs> good guys club is an adult entertainment club. Very popular with the Russian embassy staff who just live up the street. And as a result, as the Russians were there, the FBI is usually out here because the FBI is usually tailing them. There's a few other uh, foreign type places down here. There's a, I think there's an embassy down hidden in one of these buildings. And the Chinese embassy's consulate, which is the people that do the passports and visas, is actually in the basement of that building over there. 
over here you see signs in the winter of donate diapers give us be a champion that's because this is a school this building that's kind of a nondescript brick building is actually a school the british international school of washington dc and this is for british expats who live in the united states but need to keep their children on the uk curriculum uh, a curriculum because they're going to be rotated back to england in a few years and they don't want their kids having to catch up uh, between the differences in American and British schooling. There's also a French international school, a German international school, a Saudi international school. I think there's a Korean international school. All these different schools made for foreigners to go to. Private, of course, and very, very expensive. When I was in Hong Kong, of course, my kids went to an American international school teaching the American curriculum so that when they came back here, they were well suited to move into an American education system. Okay, now to remember which way to Hillary's house. I think Normanston Trail, but there's also Dumberton Oaks, which has got to be really gorgeous right now, and the Whitehaven Trail. Maybe we go down Whitehaven and then come back up Normanston or something like that. That would be pretty. I mean, I know where the house is, and I know generally how to get there. I'm just trying to, like, maximize my time in the countryside, rather than just the most direct route. I think one of the things many people don't realize about Washington is that, well, there are a lot of big parks. There are a lot of trees. Washington is a tree city, as they say. Uh, the tree cover over Washington is phenomenal. If you fly into Washington, D.C. and look out the window, you'll just be like, oh my god, we're landing in a forest. As uh, quite a bit of the city is under tall tree cover, and there are the, always these large parks. This is a connecting park between Rock Creek Parkway, which is 2,000 acres, and the Glover Archibald Park, which is considerably smaller, but still pretty deep, pretty big. And this is just a connecting path between the two. It's called Whitehaven Park, right? Or something like that. Whitehaven Park. But we can go down through here. See what we see. There's a little creek. It gets a bit bigger down there. There's actually bridges and stuff. Okay, now Hillary lives up that way. Some animals that way. But we're going to go over this way because we have to connect up to the path to take us to Hillary's house. Now Hillary Clinton uh, lives behind the vice president's house and also behind the New Zealand embassy and right across from the Danish embassy. So we're going to walk around all those little spots as we make our way. I think I heard a dog or a deer, I'm not sure which. Some pretty thick weeds over there. So we're going to cut up this way now. Now, people have run into the Clintons out for a walk here. Mostly, they go out for walks in New York, where they spend most of their time. But when they're in the D.C. area, they have been known to go for walks in the countryside. Squirrel. There's like this weird uh, walkway here of tree stumps. I'm not really sure what's up with this. Maybe this area floods, so they've got these tree stumps to... Uh, guide you across. I think the path goes up this way. That's rocks. So now is the big uphill. For every fun downhill, there's an annoying uphill. Oh, by the way, today I met a uh, Richard Citizen journalist. He was at the Marine One landing where I was uh, filming. I had never met him before. 
and he introduced himself to me. I introduced himself to him, chatted for a bit. He had an amazing camera. He let me look through his camera, which had just, oh my God, that guy knows his cameras. He bought a pretty amazing camera. And we could see uh, Marine One up close and see like the pilot and everything. Anyway, we'll see him around, I'm sure. Oops. I think I went up a dead end. I just kept going up. <laughs> I should have cut over there. Oh well. Maybe it goes this way. There's like a fence there. I think that's the New Zealand Embassy there. It's probably their backyard. You know what? Since it is a dead end. We'll block the dead end with a branch and go the way we should have gone, which is up this way, I think. The problem with all these leaves, the path is just covered. The path looks like everything else, yeah? Yeah. I don't have perfect tracking skills. But we did get from point A to point B. All right, this is the Danish Embassy, Embassy of Denmark. I think we actually run into the fence line. You see the Danish flag and the EU flag. And the flag of Lego. And right over there, that red brick house, that's Hillary's house. So this is Hillary Clinton's house. There's a New York license plate vehicle parked on the street. And this is where Hillary and Bill Clinton live when they're in Washington, D.C. I think they bought this house for like a little over two million. It's now estimated to be worth like five million or something like that. Real estate can make you rich. Made them rich, that's for sure. Wow, look at that blue sky. So that's the Clinton's place. And let's just make our way down this road. Take a gander at some of the neighbors. I know not who they are, just that they have a really nice house. Now, this house, I thought it was the next one is an ambassador's house. This one, I don't know what this one is. Just a private mansion. But the Polish ambassador lives down here. Yeah, this red brick one, that's the Polish flag flying. I guess that's the, I don't know if that's the Polish embassy. It's pretty big. I thought that was just the Polish ambassador's house and residence. We'll see when we get there. But yeah, it goes back. It's got like a big yard. Nice work if you can get it. And then this is the embassy of Sri Lanka. So this is a full-on embassy of Sri Lanka. And then this next one's for sale. No idea how much this one's on the market for. Should I look it up, guys? I mean, we're here, yeah? 
3015, uh, hang on a second, oh, this is 3015 Whitehaven Street, Northwest. This is a five bedroom, five bath, 4,896 square feet on the market for a price cut currently at $3.2 million. $3.2 million US dollars. Not Monopoly money, American. And that can be yours. And you can live right across from the Italian embassy if you want, or the Brazilian embassy right back there. So we're going to go down to Mass Avenue. You guys have seen me go down here many times before. But I tell you what, maybe today, instead of walking up Mass Avenue, we walk up the woods behind the vice president's place. And we'll come up on, right across the street from the vice president's house. And we'll go through some, uh, some Tony posh neighborhoods. Yeah? A couple ambassadors back there. Take back down this street and see what we can find, yeah? So I was going to go for a bike ride today, but I, when I woke up this morning, it's like, it's 39 degrees in Washington. I'm like, ugh. I don't want to ride a bike when it's 39 degrees. Wind is like ripping my face off and stuff. No, that's not pleasant. But tomorrow it's going to be in the mid-60s. Tomorrow I think... I think we're going to do a bike ride. What's that? Red, white, and green. Is that Hungary? So that might be the uh, ambassador of Hungary. That might be his house, I think. Or whoever is red, white, and green flag. I think that's Hungary. I know the British ambassador has a temporary house back in this area. Now, this house here, I looked it up. This one's on the market for about $12.5 million US. Yes. $12.5 million US. I mean, they're selling to foreign countries, basically. Foreign nationals with ridiculous and probably, <coughs> probably questionable money, or foreign governments who are trying to buy an embassy and are willing to pay government prices. Not really me and you kind of places. Well, at least not me. <laughs> and this house over here, this is the Russian oligarch's house that was raided by the FBI about two weeks ago. So we were here two weeks ago when the FBI had a crime scene tape and there were policemen everywhere. And uh, we were just standing over here on a bicycle, crashing into everything. <laughs> Okay, what do we have here? EU country? I think this is Belgium. Blue, yellow, and red. Isn't that Belgium's flag? But someone told me the Belgian ambassador lives somewhere else. This isn't Belgium, but I'm not sure. Sure looks like Belgium to me. That flag over there, I don't know. It's red and yellow. Is it an African country? I don't know what flag that is. It's got a lion on it. No, it's an, it's an Asian country. See, they've got those guys there. Is that, is that Sri Lanka? Is that the ambassador? It is. That's the uh, Sri Lankan ambassador's place. We just went by the Sri Lankan embassy, and that must be the ambassador's place. That's why that flag looked familiar. We just saw that flag on the other, other building a while ago. Now, the British ambassador is holed up down there right now. You can just see the British flag flying. Now, they're there while the British uh, ambassador's residence is under renovation. That's a multi-year program they're doing over there. And there's a Blackhawk flying overhead right now. There's almost always a Blackhawk flying overhead. So these bridges are really narrow. You have, it's basically one car at a time when you come down here. Both of these cars come flying down here. That was a diplomat too. He could have run me over and there's nothing I could do except get hit. Yeah? I mean, I could sue him, but the case wouldn't go forward. I could demand he be arrested, but he wouldn't be because he's had diplomatic immunity. So whenever you see a diplomat's license plate, just remember, <laughs> they're not following the same rules as you or I. Ah. Here we go. 
Norman Stone Trail. This is the trail that links back up to uh, Hillary's place. And we can take it up to the vice president's house. Now at nighttime, there are five or six big deer that come up this path up to the vice president's house. We see deer, I don't know, probably 20, 30% of the time coming home late uh, past the VP's house. Okay, this is all uphill, and here's the thing. I don't remember going downhill this much. <laughs> this isn't fair. I should have been rewarded before being punished. Uh, leaf blowers. The bane of the suburban life. Of course, we're in the city. We're not in the suburbs. <laughs> Right, where are we? Yep, I thought so. Ta da! The British Embassy. So we popped up right at the British Embassy across from the Vice President's house. And look at that. It's like the scooter Noah is coming. <laughs> yeah, baby. Woo, come to butthead. All right, guys, we're on a scooter now because, well, there was a lot of uphill. I just don't feel like it anymore. So let's spin back by the Vice President's house where not much going on at the moment because the Vice President is downtown. I'll be getting back for about six or so. Okay, right over here is the Embassy of Finland, the quote, happiest nation on earth, and one of the best educated. And they've got a free local little library. And let's see, let's see what's new from the Finns today. Now, a lot of the books they have are in Finnish, that's in Finnish, but sometimes they have some books in English and if you want to get up to date on like your latest Scandi Noir like crime novels from Northern Europe this is a place to check it out. I wonder who this is. Marie Jumpstead. She's got quite a few books. I wonder if those have been translated into English. Not translated English here. These are all in Finnish. Sometimes though, sometimes we get lucky. Just not today. All right, we'll keep looking. We'll keep stopping by. That's the Vatican's embassy, but it's not really an embassy. It's got this incredibly long, bizarre title that I don't know. I don't even know how to pronounce. And there's the Norwegians. Now, I thought this was the Norwegian ambassador's place, but then they've attached like a chancery in the back. So this might be a combo embassy and residence. And there's Princess. Margaret? No, not Princess Margaret. Ooh. You know, the trees back here are just gorgeous, yeah. It's all sorts of color back here behind the cathedral. We just have to make sure we can get up this road without getting killed. It is a one-way street, after all. And a hill. sucked. Up we go. There's so many speed bumps back here. Just frustrating. Yeah, we snuck back out. There's the cathedral. Snuck back around. Pretty simple drive today. Simple walk. Got some lunch. Saw Hillary's. Got a scooter, most importantly. So, we're back at the cathedral. Thanks a lot for watching today. No, it wasn't that interesting, but still, hey, it's fall, it's pretty. Anyway, tomorrow we're gonna go for a nice long bike ride, I hope, and we might see a helicopter. And well, who knows what else we might see. There might be voting up on the hill. Maybe.